All right, welcome back. In this video, we're looking at for loops, and the reason we're looking at for loops is because of this while loop right here. So I'll explain this while loop first, and then we can uh, figure out how to make this loop with a for loop instead. So first of all, we have integer i initialized to 1, and as long as integer i is less than or equal to 10, we're going to print that number to the screen, bump it down a line, and then increment the, the integer. So if we go build and run this program, see what it's doing, this makes total sense. It prints one, two, three, and each of them up to 10 on its new line. Now it turns out that this uh, this like uh, style of loop is so popular that uh, it's actually easier to make it with something called a for loop. So we'll just leave this down here for our reference in the comment section, but we don't need that anymore. Delete all that stuff. Um, and now we're gonna make this exact same program using a for loop. So write for. And then this is uh, what it's prompted us here is the structure of our for loop. So there's three sections up here in brackets. There's the it says initial, condition, and increment, and then our statements. Okay, so initial is where we're going to initialize a variable that appears only in this loop. Um, so in this case, remember we called it int i, and this will initialize it to one because we're making the same program as this. Now, this, uh, this time the integer i is only defined in this loop, whereas before it was defined outside, just something to pay attention to. So the next thing is, is the condition. This is what we're working towards, or what were our test conditions. Remember, it was uh, as long as i was less than or equal to 10. So we can write that simply like this. Um, i is less than or equal to 10. All right, we're trying to make the same program. And the increment, this is what happens is, after the statements go through once, it'll pop up here to the increment, and we wanted i++. Okay, so now our statements, all we have to do is the things that we're doing in our loop is see out i and end line. Okay, so this is a little bit weird at first, because there's three different things going on, and it's not, um, it's not like this well loop where it just reads it line by line, and it kind of makes sense. The for loop is a little less intuitive, but very powerful nonetheless. So the compiler comes in and it recognizes that it's a for loop and then it checks for what what um, variable that we've initialized to use. Then what it's going to do is it's going to see or it's going to um, go through the statements and keep doing them until the test condition fails. Right? As long as this is true, it'll keep doing it. And at the end of each time it goes through the statements, when it reaches the bottom, it's going to do whatever it says up here. It's going to increment something. Now it's really important that uh, you know this, that uh, these three, so there's three sections up here. Um, there's the initialization, the condition, and uh, the update. And they, you can notice that they all relate to this integer i. You don't have to do that. Like if you wanted to relate your test condition to something else, I suppose you could. But it is really good practice to have these three relating to each other. So, anyways, enough talking for now. Let's just look and see what happens when we run this program. Well, first of all, I'm running on low battery. Um, but look at this. It is printing exactly the same thing that our while loop was. So, hopefully that makes sense. Um, maybe if you want to play around with it a little bit, maybe change this to a 5 or something. Um, oops, I guess we have to compile it before we recognize that update. Alright, so... Now look at this, it's starting counting at 5 and then going up to 10, right? Because it was initialized to 5 now. So that's, um, that's all good. Now that's like the very brief intro, but now we're going to apply it just to that same investment calculator we were making in the while loop video. So I'll just go and uh, copy and paste that in here for you. All right, here it is. So there you go. Um, again, you've seen this before, probably in the while loop video. Um, this is just the CN, see out stuff, interacting with the user, defining the, the variables that we don't really need to talk about. Um, what we're doing is we're trying to make the same program using for loop. So actually, maybe if you want to click uh, somewhere, how about right here? I'll make a box for you guys. You can just link right to that, that while loop video on YouTube there. Um, just to see how to do this with a while loop, but now we're going to do it with a for loop. So, like I said, we have already, you know, we've initial or we've declared the initial balance, the balance, the rate, the contributions, and the years. This is just basic C in, C out stuff. And uh, now we're going to get to the for loop here. So, we want to finish off our investment calculator. Oops. Oops. There we go. Uh, so we're going to initialize uh, some counter, right? Remember, we're going to use integer i. I like using i. So for i, int i is equal to 1. 
Uh, well, i is less than or equal to years. And then we're going to increment i plus plus. Okay, so this is going to be able to um, tell us um, if we invested for maybe, say, five years or ten years, how much money would we have each year? That's what this for loop would be really good for. Um, now, with statements, we're just going to have to declare one more or define one more variable in here. It was uh, double interest. <coughs> and that is going to be balance times rate. Right, that's just some simple banking there. And the reason we want to divide it by 100, because say if it was 5%, they would probably type in a 5, but we want that to be 0 0.05. Okay, moving on though, this is not a banking lesson. Um, now we have our balance, we just want to update that. Balance is equal to the old balance plus the interest plus any contributions they might be adding in there. And then we're just going to see out, um, whereas before in the other video we were, um, we were finding out how long it would take to reach certain goals, this is just going to show us how much money we have each year. So first of all, we'll see out um, i, and you'll see why in one second, and then a space to separate them, and then the balance. And this will give us a nice little table of how much money for in they have in each year. And then um, we should probably end line. And yeah, that should do it. So we're going to compile this, and let's see what happens. So we're going to go in. This is looking like a very familiar program now. So let's say they invest a thousand dollars. Okay, uh, we're not going to have any yearly contributions, maybe 5% interest rate, and let's say we want to see check it out for a 15 year investment. So look at this. After one year, so this this first column here would be like the number of years, and the second column would be the amount of money they have. So we could specify, but it just gets a little, this is pretty clean to look at. So they look at this, after one year, they have $10,500. After two years, they have $11,025. And if you remember, it takes uh, 15 years for that investment to double. And so here you're seeing at 14 years, they're not quite there. But at 15 years, they have definitely at least doubled their money. So that's a quick uh, quick way to look at this. And so let's talk about the for loop, I guess. That's the point. Um, so let's see why we chose what we did. So we wanted to define a new integer i here just for something to increment. And it didn't matter what it was, we call I, we call anything, just as long as it starts at 1 and it's working towards something. Um, now, it's working towards whatever years the, the users see in. Um, so let's say I typed in 15 years, then it's going to go as long as it's less than 15, it's going to keep doing these loop iterations. And so then after it recognizes that, it's going to come down here, it's going to calculate the interest, calculate the new balance, print it out in a nice little table, and then after all that's done, it's going to increment our our integer here that we've initialized. Okay, cool. I hope that makes sense. It's uh kind of this video jumped around a lot, but I would just wanted to um, you know, explain a little bit the very simple mechanics of how uh, the, the for loop relates to the while loop, and then also just a little bit of an example here about maybe some sort of practical practical use that maybe like uh, seeing this would put it into perspective a little bit more. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.